Oh, there you are. I'm George. Yes, I'm your host, and this is the channel that dares to unlock all those mysteries of home distilling, of course. And we're here to unlock one more for you today. Uh, this one is very, very important, and I think it's really critical, uh, because this is a public service uh, for all those who are still trying to make hand sanitizer, and you find that it's just challenging. I want to unlock the mystery so that I can make it as relatively simple and as easy for you to be as successful as anyone else. Now, uh, i got to take this step by step, so please bear with me. And of course, if you get a chance, subscribe. Yes, share us with your friends, comment below. Thank you. I do appreciate it. Yes, and it does make a big difference. Now, we do understand that the basis for making hand sanitizer, oh, it, this is a store-bought version, a commercial version, it's 63% ethyl alcohol and a whole bunch of other stuff with it. And that other stuff is really some aloe vera gel, a little bit of hydrogen peroxide. It's got a bunch of different names, but it's, there's a cosmetic thickening agent that's in here as well. So that's what makes it so thick. Um, but we can make it just as, just as effective or even better than that uh, if we make it ourselves. Uh, but we need some of the, we need the basic ingredients. Fairly easy to come by, but I'm not sure any longer. Uh, I know this stuff is being sold out real quick. So, in short, if you cannot, I'm, I'm going to give you a tip here. If you cannot get 100% aloe vera gel, just the gel itself, then I found that Johnson & Johnson makes a gel, and this one is a coconut-based uh, baby oil gel, which works just as well, and plus it leaves a pretty, it leaves a kind of a coconut flavor behind, or coconut odor behind. Uh, the only difference is, is that this one will leave a residue on your hands that will keep them really, really nice and soft. Some of you might really like that. Uh, whereas this one will dissipate um, and work just like a regular commercial gel. Okay. Uh, now They also make, I got this one as a Quaid. It's an off-market brand out of Walmart. Uh, and it's a, it's a baby oil gel, same thing. So these two will work as well. Uh, but be cautious, not any and every gel on the market or hand lotion or hand sanitizer uh, will do the trick. Um, there, there's a lot of difference in the chemical makes up in components. And in some cases, uh, with ethyl alcohol, it just don't mix. Uh, in some cases, it does. And in those two particular cases, it does. So we're going to make it the traditional way with aloe vera gel, uh, some hydrogen peroxide. Why do we use that? Well, the, you know, the CDC and uh, everybody else and, uh, has, you know, has told us exactly what the mixtures are. And that's, that's so that you make it undrinkable. Huh. Uh, that's one. And really, the, big, the, the major reason is, is that it's, it's sort of like a disinfectant, even though ethyl alcohol is a natural preservative in itself. Uh, but it's a disinfectant if you're making really, really large batches, you know, like in big 55-gallon drums. Uh, so we're going to use, it, it only takes a slight amount of that. We're going to use that. Uh, then we're going to use some ethyl alcohol. And I just happen to have a couple of jars laying around. Now, this one in particular, you'll see here, this one is... This one measures out at like 170, oh, about 170, yeah, about 170 proof. So that one would be satisfactory. Um, but there's a challenge with that. And I want to make sure that I can explain. All I got to do is find my pen. I've got my whiteboard laying here. And if you would just indulge me for a second, I can clarify this. And it really, really opens up the world. Okay, now that we've got all that stuff out of the way, all right. Um, please bear with me for just a few minutes because what I tell you here is going to make a huge, huge difference there and also in your shop. It's going to make a huge difference. We know that 180 proof is what the requirement is for ethyl alcohol, which is what? 90% ABV. Okay, 90% ABV. Um, alcohol by volume. So 90% of whatever's in your is, is alcohol. Uh, and that ethyl alcohol is effective and can kill virus. 
Okay, okay now why is it 90%? Well, you, you, you need to understand the breakdown of this. What happens if you, will 90% kill the virus if you pour it on your hands? Absolutely. Uh, but probably not. Uh, and here's the reason why. Because at 90% alcohol by volume, it will dissipate and evaporate so quickly. You need about, oh, you need somewhere about 30 seconds, according to the CDC, you need about 30 seconds of contact time uh, for that ethyl alcohol in order to kill a virus. So, what, what do we, what we need something, in, something to carry that alcohol for a length of time that is sufficient in order to kill. Oh, wow. So that's why the recommendation is that your final, let's do this. Here's the three ounce, and we're going to get a standard three, three ounce bottle is easy to work with, okay? And this scales up. It's a linear problem, so it works up. It's, as you scale it up, just double it, triple it, whatever the case may be. I'll use my Barley and Hops app on my phone, and I'll actually put a link to that. You'll see at the bottom of this video, you'll see I put a link to that so you can, there's a bunch of, we got a bunch of different calculators that are going to help you do a whole bunch of different things. Uh, and in this particular case, uh, it's for mixing and cutting. Um, and you'll use the same app to determine what the values are, how much ethyl alcohol and how much aloe vera you need to go from X proof and to remain at X proof and or percent alcohol by volume. And in general, you're going to wind up being two-thirds alcohol and one-third um, ethanol. That doesn't have a Y. And a gel. So it'll be about two-thirds, one-third. It will be, and that's a, a, that's a generality, okay? I'm going to give you that as a generality. Now, that's if you're using 180 proof, which is 90% alcohol by volume. Now, can you... Think of it like this. What is 60%? It has to be at least 60%. What is 60% alcohol by volume is 120 proof. Now, we're not going to get 180 proof out of a pot still. You know? You know what I'm talking about. It's just a condenser. It is no reflux. Uh, so you're going to wind up with probably 120 proof. If you're good, you get 140 proof. But my point is, is that you start off with a low point, low proof. You've got to have 60% alcohol by volume. If you put two thirds of 60% alcohol by volume here and then add gel to it, you'll reduce this below 60% alcohol by volume, thereby making it ineffective. So far, so good. Okay, well, then you, you would ask, well, what if I'm pumping out a 140 proof? Well, yeah, that's going to be 70% alcohol by volume. Okay, if you put 70% in here, alcohol by volume, and you add, let's say, just a little bit of gel to keep it at 60, what's the problem there? Hmm? It, think, think through it. Remember, we already talked about you need something to keep it on your skin for an extended period of time. Okay, somewhere around 30 seconds or so. Well, you, you don't have enough gel to do that. Uh, see, now, now we're going into that. We're, when we go deep into it, we're talking about the hydrogen bonds, the connection, and how many you've got compared to what you've got as your medium that's carrying it. Uh, and your alcohol is just going to evaporate, and so it becomes, again, not effective. Or if you had put the full amount of gel in there, again, this is going to be below the 60% requirement. So that's where the challenge is. The challenge is, is people, they, they, we get stuck. We go, we've got to have, and it's true, you've got to have at least 180 proof to start with in order to make a gel that is effective enough that it will carry that ethyl alcohol across your skin for, any, for the length of time necessary to kill everything. That's the bottom line. So, so instead of working with this figure and this figure and this and worrying about and worrying about this, what do we have to what do we have to focus on? Okay, this comes as it is. We need to focus on this number right here. And how do we get this number as high as we possibly can?
Well, there's two ways to do that, my friends. I know, please, please, bear, bear with me. There's two ways to do that. One's through using a reflux column where you have the vapors rise, pre-condensed, drop, rise, pre-condensed, drop, rise, and then some of them make them out, and then they condense and they drop out here. Very, very high proof. All right, that's one of your options. Well, your other option is, short of that, if you have only a pot still, or your end product is only coming out at, let's say it's coming out at one, let's say I've only got it at 170 proof. Okay, and that's what that is. And what's that make that, 85% alcohol by volume? I would love to be higher. Let's say, no, let's, let's say for instance, it is 140 proof. That's only 70% alcohol by volume. How do we make this number bigger? Here's a video that we did, oh, uh, several months ago. There it is. It's 200 proof. Can we get there? And the answer is yes. Uh, but you have to use molecular sieves to do so. Now, I'm not going to go through the size of the pores, the angstroms, and how they're measured like I did on that one, and what happens to the molecules. All that. I'm just going to show you how this works, and you're going to be amazed. But yes, let's work on this number. We can make that number higher. We can make that number 195 if we want to. Now, what do we sacrifice when we do that? If we take, here's that three-ounce bottle again. If two-thirds of that is 70% alcohol by volume, then... At that point, it's what's it about 15% water? If we remove that 15% water, yes, we're going to sacrifice some volume. But we're not going to sacrifice a whole lot. All we want to do is extract the water out of it. And we don't want to extract the alcohol. So we're going to use the 3A, which is, and that is a designation for the three angstrom. That's the size of the pores. A 3A molecular sieve in order to do that. Are you ready for this? This is going to make everybody in the world, every home distiller is going to be able to make your own hand sanitizer with whatever system you have. Okay, we've got that out of the way. Um, so don't forget, we're going to work, we're, we're going to focus solely on our alcohol by volume percentage number. And we're going to arbitrarily and artificially increase that so that we have the purest alcohol we possibly can. Now, it is fair to note right now that this is not what I, I would not recommend this at all if you're just trying to increase the alcohol by volume for your spirits. There are some, there are some unintentional side effects like discoloration and things like that that uh, you will not be happy with. But we're not drinking this, okay? So work with me, please. Don't write in and ask me, can I just take it? Please, just work with me, okay? Um, you'll need that app. And again, that's at the bottom of this video. And uh, that'll set you free and it'll show you. And it's good for all of your cuts. This is a five-pound bag that I purchased on Amazon. I will also include the link to this in the bottom of this video, okay? So you can go in there and order a five-pound bag of this stuff, uh, and you can use it over and over and over again. You can regenerate it. This cost me $15, okay? $15. A 3A molecular sieve will absorb 20% of water by weight. Okay, what do I mean by that? And in uh, one gallon of water is 8.34 pounds. So if I put in 8.34 pounds of molecular sieves, I can, I can absorb 20% of that, <laughs> which is, uh, you figure it out, okay? It's quite a bit of water. These are very, molecular sieves are an excellent way in order to, it's, as a drying agent, to dry ethanol, okay? So we've started out with 170 proof, and what I'm going to do is pour my 170 proof back in here. And we will leave this 
proof and trail hydrometer and our test cylinder aside until it's time that we need it. I've got a scale and before you even ask, yes there's a mathematical formula you can use but it's about that darn long so I got 10 pounds of this stuff. I'm going to use as little as I can to get away with and I'm going to run, make two runs, okay? Uh, there's multiple methods and ways in which I'm doing this, uh, but this is the one I have found that works best for me, okay? So do it the way you like. Uh, I'm going to do it best for me, and as I do it, I'll explain it. You, I, you'll probably understand why I selected this method. This is what it looks like when it comes out of there. It's all vacuum sealed so that no air or humidity can get to it. So these are 100% dry, and there's five pounds of these little rascals in there, and they're real little tiny beads, and you'll get a chance to see those. Okay, I've got my razor, and I'm ready to go. And I'm also going to use an imperial measurement. I'm using pounds. Um, I'm going to use one pound uh, to start with. There. And all I've got to do is cut off a little corner of this and pour these out. And you'll see that they are very small. Oh, there we go. And they go everywhere. I don't care what you do. They're going to go everywhere. But they're really small. Uh, seal that back up as best you can so it doesn't absorb any humidity. Now, I've got a half a gallon mason jar. I've got one BAF, big ass funnel, and I'm going to introduce those into here. Now there's a reason why I'm doing this. There's two methods, uh, and I'm going to use both of them for a reason, okay? One is let me just pour this in here, and I'm going to pour all of this, and I've got almost a quart. I don't want to fill it up with water just to make it a quart, because what am I trying to do? I'm trying to remove the water. About 15% of this is water, and if I can get that out, this will be really, really high proof, because right now it's only 170. So I'm going to pour this in here, and we're going to allow this to set. Now while this sets in there, you'll be able to look Don't shake it up real good, but you can roll it around, and what you want to do is allow that liquid to flow over all of those beads. Uh, now what's going to happen is, when you put your hands around it, you'll feel it. You'll feel the thermal activity. There's a, there's a lot of thermal activity going on in here, as that those uh, water molecules are working their way inside those beads, and your ethanol is just is being pushed out. Now, at the same time, you'll see it, it looks a little cloudy. What is that? That cloudiness that you see in there, and if you look really, really close, I'm going to do a close-up. If you look really, really close and focus, what you'll see is a bunch of bubbles, real little tiny bubbles. What do you think that is? Exactly. That's the water that's entering inside of that small molecular sieve and pushing the air out of the other side. So it's replacing all of those little cavities in there that are full of air is being replaced with water. That air has to go somewhere, so it's dissipating all that air. So that's why I'm doing it like this. So I'm, see, I'm giving it a place to set so that all that water can work its way inside those beads. Now, as it does that, every once in a while, just give it a roll so that you don't get any pockets and allow that to sit. And I can feel that that's, that, that's, that's going to raise probably 15 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. You can feel it. Um, it's, it's a pretty substantial increase in temperature. Now, the other thing that I have, that's one pound of beads. Now, I'm going to put this, my second pound, well, I'll get almost a pound in here. Um, and this is nothing more than a three-inch uh, connector for one of my stills, for one of my columns. It's the gin basket. And it's got, you see, it's got that screen in the bottom. So I'm going to fill those in there. And this is the second method. After I do this, in order to get the final, uh, anything that's left in that ethanol, if there's any water left in that ethanol, I'm going to let that leach down through those 
molecular sieves and drop into my half gallon mason jar. So far, so good. So you'll see why I chose this method. Now, would this be sufficient or just enough? Um, chances are, I know it's going to go from 170. I know it's going to go up. Uh, but how much? We're going to find out. Um, and additionally, how long should I leave it set here? Well, I need to leave it set here until all of that all, all of that all of that oxygen and air is dissipated out of all of those beads, and I can I stop seeing any air escaping to the top. Make sure you put the lid on loosely so it's got a place to escape to. But you, again, that's probably gone up 20, 25 degrees Fahrenheit now. But there's a lot of thermal activity. Let you know it's really working well. Look at that. When I shake it, you can see all the air bubbles that that are being released. So we're going to let that set for a few minutes, and we shall return. You can see it's still releasing air. When we began, I had a jar look just like this. Here that jar is empty. That jar was 100 and, I'm sorry, it was, that jar was 74 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I put my probe inside where I've got my molecular sieves, and you'll see it's 133 degrees, 133.1 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's just an example of how much thermal energy is created when those molecular sieves start to get to working. Um, now, you see this bubble? That's not boiling, folks, okay? Oh, that's way below boil. That's not boiling. That's just the, the remaining air that's being pushed out by the water that's starting to occupy all of those sieves that are in there. And that air is just escaping. So we've been at this for about 15 minutes. It's starting to slow down really, really a, a whole lot. So it'll be finished up here shortly. So you have to be patient with this. It's been about an hour. And you'll see that it's really started to clear up. It's no longer cloudy like it used to be. And there's very, very few bubbles popping up. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to transfer this into this small makeshift uh, apparatus that I have here. And this is still rather warm. I'm going to just pour these in here and allow that. Now, I've already got some sieves in this, this column. Now, let me ask, how much volume do you think we're going to lose? Well, we're going to lose quite a, well, yeah, quite a bit, uh, in fact, for two reasons. One, we're removing all the water out of there, but, oh, shoot, and that thing just leaked on me. So I just lost about half of that. Oh, my goodness. Uh, the other thing that we're going to lose is we're going to lose based on adhesion which is you're going to have some ethanol that is going to just be attached to the outside of those sieves. See, it's still draining. Um, and they're going to be attached to the outside of those sieves just, uh, you know, just like it would when you're pouring water out of a glass, you know, and it runs along the side of the glass. You can't understand why. That's because it's called adhesion. So, yeah, that's just about done. I've got to get ready for the next batch, but we will we, we, but what we need to do with this one is we need to test this, and I need to come up with a better system for this part, uh, or maybe even just skip that altogether. Because that, yeah, that required a better seal than I had. Now, I'm sure you can see that from there, but my hydrometer is floating at 199 proof. And since I use my correction table, uh, which is, it, it, I just have to remove, I have to subtract 1.34 proof. So I'm right now I'm at 98, 97 point something proof. That's pretty darn good. I think I'm going to stick with that. So. That's the result of one pound with that one quart. And so now I've got to do the other one. And we still got to show you how to reuse this stuff over and over again.
this is the app I'm using. It's fairly, it, it, it's, a, it's fairly intuitive. Um, I've got 80 milliliters that I'm starting with. I'm using milliliters. I want 130 proof to be my final proof. I'm starting off with 197 proof. And if you go up down here, it'll tell you. Here's what I need to do. Is I, need, I need to add 52.79 milliliters of alcohol uh, into 27.21 milliliters of water, or in this case, aloe vera. We're at that point. See, I, yep, I just showed you that a close-up. Um, I'm going to use my app, uh, and that tells me what my mixture is going to be. But before we get to that mixture, I just want to tell you real quickly, how do we regenerate that stuff? Those 3A molecular sieves. Well, if you take a baking pan, a large baking pan, and spread them out in a thin layer across that baking pan, put them in the oven at 250 degrees for about an hour, and then pull them back out, and then let them cool as rapidly as you can. You don't have, you don't have to do anything crazy, because, but just remember that they will pick up the, uh, the relative humidity in the air if you're not careful. So uh, they'll be pretty warm to touch and play with, and then put them in a sealed container that doesn't have any air in it, and you can use them again over and over and over again. All you've got to do is heat out all of that water that's been collected inside of all those molecular sieves so you can regenerate those. Now, I've got another batch going right here, and in this particular one, I have about, ouch, that's pretty darn hot. I've got about a pound and a half of uh, my, my molecular sieves, and I added a, more than a quart. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make up for the stuff that I lost on this one. <clears throat> and it's time to do some quick mixing. Now, these are 2.7 or 80 milliliter bottles, and I'm going to mix up one real quick, and then I'll just mix the rest of them up and, and of course, when this one's finished up, I'll have probably the same thing, about 197, 198 proof. Could be 200 proof. Um, I'm expecting it to be pretty high up there. So, in this particular case, there we go. There's 20 milliliters. Forty milliliters. And then 12, because it said 52, 12 milliliters and a tad more. Um, a small squirt, it doesn't take a whole lot, because uh, this stuff goes a long way, of hydrogen peroxide. And then... I don't have to measure this out. I just got to fill the rest of the bottle. Mm -hmm. And now I have one bottle of hand sanitizer that is above the governmental recommended alcohol by volume level of 60, this is now 65% alcohol by volume hand sanitizer. You can do this as well. Here's my caution. Just remember that I started with 170 proof and brought it to 197 point something proof uh, with one iteration. You may have to do two iterations. Let's say, for instance, you started off, what is that? That's a 27-point that's a um, raise in one hour. Um, if you started off with 140, you may have to do that twice. Uh, but the question to be resolved here is, well, if I can't pump out 180 proof or 190 proof out of my still, uh, am I stuck? Can I, you know, uh, with what I have, if I have 130 or 140 proof or 150 proof, can I still make hand sanitizer that's effective? Well, the answer to that is yes, but you have to use the molecular sieves. And again, they're only $15 for five pounds, uh, and that'll get you through quite a bit. And remember, you can use them over and over again. So that's my message. Um, I, I'm not quite sure what else I can offer. Uh, I'm going to let that one run. Again, do my testing, because I got a lot of this. I got oodles and oodles of these bottles here that I want to fill up in so that I can share. 
Oh, and until next time, oh, of course, please be safe and happy distilling.